What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here at MattyFish33 on YouTube. If you've been here before, thank you. Couldn't do this without you guys. If it's your first time here, like, subscribe, click that bell, share, get those notifications, and follow us along on this fishy journey. Today we are going to talk about our African cichlid setup. We're going to go over a few things that if you decide that you want a tank full of hap and peacock African cichlids from Lake Malawi, that will make your life a lot easier. Now, that being said, before we really hop into this, I understand there are many ways to set up an aquarium. I'm going to talk about how I set this tank specifically up, and then I'm probably going to mention a little bit about other ways that it can be done as well and still be successful. But um, let's go ahead and dive into it, guys. So, first things first biggest thing for me when you're keeping African cichlids is going to be first and foremost your substrate and your filtration. So let's talk about the substrate that is in this tank right now. So there is a little bit of black sand in here but it's mixed with a lot of aragonite and I think there's also a bag of coralline mixed in here also which is also another form of crushed coral just like aragonite. So what does all of that aragonite do? Also, mind you, you can get like those um, mixes of aragonite and black sand, um, you know, the African cichlid um, substrate mix um, from Carib Sea. That one's pretty good. If you want to go a little cheaper, you can buy your own aragonite, your own black sand, mix that up. Um, but one thing that I will say, I've noticed like you don't necessarily need like the finest of sands in the world. Um, these guys are still going to dig in the sand even though these are mostly haps and peacocks in here. Oh, actually they're all haps and peacocks in here with the exception of the frontosa. Um, however, these guys are going to dig in the sand. So you want something like a little more medium grain. You see that blue Ali just kicked some sand up back there, but you see it's not clouding the water or anything. Now granted this aquarium is quite established, but just remember if you have really fine sand, you're going to get more particles in your water column and more of that is probably going to get sucked into your filtration so i would suggest more of say a medium grit sand as you can kind of see um the sand isn't you know it ain't it's not gravel by any means not even close but it's not super super fine either the black sand that's mixed in here is a little bit finer but the aragonite is is slightly coarse um but back to what I was talking about. So what does that do for your system, right? So aragonite, crushed coral type sands, things like that. That helps raise your pH one, which hard water and high pH, great for African cichlids. Um, and it also creates a very pH stable environment as well. Um, so, you know, you won't have to use buffers as often or if at all, if you don't want to like, I don't use any buffers, I just put some regular old sea salt when I do my water changes and that's really what my buffer is in this tank guys. Alright, so keep that in mind when you're setting this up. Also because they do dig, I will show you your best friend. See this egg crate right here for your rocks to sit on so that nothing shifts around? Best friend when you have African cichlids, let me tell you, especially if you plan on putting actual large rocks like I have in here. We'll get back to those in a second. Let's talk about our filtration real quick. So, down low, we have not only one, but we have two FX6 canister filters, and this one actually has a UV light attachment on it too. Um, so, you know, lots of extra filtration. Some would say this is way overkill for filtration, but for African cichlids, for those of you that are maybe not keeping African cichlids and are also going to keep fish that grow larger, go with more filtration. You can always regulate your flow, but the more biofiltration that you can have um, outside of just mechanical filtration, the more stable of an environment and um, the closer, well, not closer, but like more or less, you're creating your own ecosystem here. So the more filtration, the larger the aquifer, i.e. your um, biological filtration and your water column size, 
the better off you're going to be in the long term, especially once all your fish start to get large. Now, you know, a lot of people will get an African cichlid, like a hap or a peacock, which, like, what's in this tank. And they'll see them at the fish store, and they're usually probably a juiced-up fish, which means they've been hormones, so you can see their colors, and they're probably, you know, two or so inches long, and they'll go, oh, that's a really cool fish, not realizing that, you know, one day... I mean, look at that. This guy is as big as my hand. My hand is about a little over seven and a half inches long, so... <laughs> I mean, just to put that into perspective for you guys. Other things, flow is key, in my opinion, especially for your larger haps and peacocks. They love a lot of flow. Mbunas do as well. But we'll cover that in another video when we talk about Mbuna Mountain. Today we are talking about the jungle. Or, um, excuse me, we're talking about the big boy tank, our setup for our peacocks and haps. So, aside from the two FX6s, which I run them wide open. So one goes this way and pushes the water that -a ways The other one comes this way, pushes the water that -a ways but that is not the end of the flow. So to redirect all the particulation, and I think, um, I'm not sure why I have some micro bubbles. I did do a water change earlier today, so there might be some, um, some trapped air in one of these FX6s that didn't fully purge itself yet. I'm assuming that's what it is. However, so we have power head here, that is tilted up. If I remember correctly, this power head is 2400, no, 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 sorry. This power head is 1725 gallons an hour. And I have this pushing up so that it agitates the top of my water and then you see it moves along that way. You see all of that flow coming from that power head and also from the orientation of our FX6 filtration. And then we have these other two power heads here. So this one is kind of on the back side of the tank, pushing water around the back of the tank. And then we have our two other power heads here, or wave makers, if you will, um, that I can slave together, I can intermit, but one is pushing detritus along the bottom, and the other is pushing to continue that circulatory flow that I've created with the way that I have this laid out because you can see from here I need to clean this glass actually I did a water change but I did not clean my glass when I did my water change so not quite looking as clear as it actually is if you look at the glass it makes it look cloudy but it's really not as you can see super super clear if the camera would focus there we go but as I was saying Another important factor, how high or how low you set your intakes for your filtration. I could have probably set these a little bit lower, um, but really these are about as far as the FX6 is going to extend. This is a 29 and a half inch tall tank, so probably could have brought them down a little more, but you know, I decided that I would leave them here, which this is fine. These guys are going to kick stuff up off the sand. As long as there's no pockets where detritus is just kind of sitting anywhere, which, as you can see, it's not. Well, there's a little piece of poop right here, but you can see it's getting moved along, and it's eventually going to find its way back there, get kicked up, and go right up into that intake. Now, let's talk about some outside sources of filtration. With many, um, many fish, it's great to have plants and um, to get some natural filtration, if you will, from your plants. They are gonna absorb some of those nitrates and, and ammonia out of the water, and they are gonna feed off of things that are gonna be detrimental to your fish and your nitrogen cycle in the water. But <laughs> African cichlids and plants generally don't mix. I mean, you can do some plants. I've elected not to inside the aquarium with these guys just because I don't want to deal with replanting plants all the time because even if they're not going to eat or shred the plant entirely, chances are is they're going to knock it out. You see a little action there, our buco getting fired up. He's really been getting fired up lately. If you guys didn't check out his feature video, he needs a name still, so comment down below or go check out that video. Comment under there. I need a couple more names so we can start a poll to name our Bucochromus lepturus green. So, as I was saying though, plants, I don't do them inside my water column, or at least planted with African cichlids. Because again, 
they're just going to rearrange it 99% of the time. So, you know, you could do fake plants. I'm not a big fan of fake plants, though. Um, I like to keep things natural. So, what I've elected to do is I have these pothos. There's three different ones growing out the uh, top up here. And they're just in these little acrylic boxes with slats to kind of protect the roots so they don't get eaten. And um, you'll see, like, this one, the roots are kind of gone. That's because a few days ago, this acrylic box actually got knocked down. I'm not quite sure. It happened while I was at work. And when I came home, half the roots of the plant were destroyed. It was just kind of hanging up there on the glass and didn't fall in, fortunately. But definitely, uh, this plant is on the mend. Um, and these pothos, they get huge, actually. And believe it or not, see, like, that is much larger than you would think just by letting it sit there but like that pales into comparison to what the size of that pothos could actually be one day i mean it could take over the top of this tank now granted we t we keep this tank pretty clean so there's probably not going to be enough nutrient for that plant to get there very quickly it'll take a long time um, if you were to be someone that maybe overfed your fish or something, though, you would see that plant growing like wildfire. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about these rocks that are in here, guys. So these are actual rocks. They're not fake stones. Some of these rocks are very heavy. Um, I, I would say the smaller of these rocks, um, you know, not including like something like that, but like the larger rocks that are in here, the smaller of them is probably around 10, 12 pounds. Um, like these, these are boulder sized rocks, guys. And then, you know, I would say the largest is probably somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds, um, give or take. Now, why these rocks specifically? So these rocks are just like regular old aggregate rocks. However, these are primarily consisting of granite and limestone. So yet another mineral in my rocks that has helped raising my pH and creating nice hard water. Now, granted, I have great hard water that comes out of my tap here, so it's not really an issue, but that doesn't mean that you can stop there. Like I said, you know, the more benefits that you can give your fish, the more stability that you can give your system, the more your fish are going to enjoy it, the more chance that if you were to make a simple or a silly mistake for um, those of us that are experienced fish keepers out there, it might not be as detrimental if you have all of these other things. To me, your setup is the most important thing in your aquarium. Don't worry about the number of fish right away. Don't worry about this. Just plan your setup like whatever you put in that tank whether you are doing african cichlids and doing a setup this way like i'm kind of showing you plan your tank like it is going to sustain the ecosystem that the fish live in no matter how big these fish get no matter how much waste there is and you know a lot of people tend to overcrowd i try to like I, you know I, I i with haps and peacocks i try to stay away from overcrowding Umbunas, you know, I kind of go a little more the overcrowding route, but these guys, I like to give them a little more space. I try to rely more on good husbandry and relying on choosing the proper fish for an aquarium, i.e., you know, generally you don't really want any females. However, there are a couple females in here that, you know, kind of grew out and, oh, well, they're actually female. But, you know, hasn't been an issue because the females that I've have in this tank i've stated in many videos before um you know they cause the boys to get a little fired up here and there but like nothing to where i have fish fighting or shredding each other or or lip locking for that matter mostly just chasing a couple standoffs things like that but these females aren't really uh something that most of these males in here are going to be interested into there would be maybe few exception but the odds of it are almost astronomical so all male tanks, big help there. If you are keeping a breeding group, you know, like one male to three to five females minimum. Okay? So, you know, back to these rocks though for a second. These are limestone and granite aggregate. And I think there is a little bit of quartz mixed in there um, in some of these. 
Um, but the limestone, that mineral is going to, like I said, it raises your water hardness, helps control your pH. And the granite is, is a very, you know, stable, it's, it's like, I don't want to say inert because it probably does something for your water column. My brain is just not remembering the specifics of that right now. But it's not something that is going to negatively impact your water, whether you are looking to have a more alkaline setup versus a more basic setup. It, you know, it's not going to have that effect. But the limestone in these rocks is so that's going to help keep our water nice and hard and raise that ph like i was saying earlier um you know there are some other things that i could do in this system that i just haven't done yet you know i think one day eventually when you know we upgrade these guys into something over 300 gallons that we might put a sump under the tank and then put one fx6 for polishing only and then have a big massive sump under it probably like maybe a hundred twenty five gallon sump who knows we'll see that's that's way down the road guys but you know like I said there's many ways to set up an African cichlid tank this is how I like to do it and as you can see it does wonders and it works perfectly fine guys look how beautiful our fish are our buco again if you haven't seen his feature video yet go check out that last video comment below what you think we should name that fish he's such a pretty boy our star sapphire check out he's just really shimmering getting all of those chips all these guys doing really well v or vc10 if he'll come back down you can see how brilliant he's looking old red big owl Tangier, or tangerine tiger everybody in here i mean i think you guys get the point they are doing fantastically well and for the most part they get along and i say for the most part because you know for those of us that keep african cichlids we know that no matter what you do there's going to be a little chasing there's going to be small signs of aggression here and there regardless i mean let's be honest they're african cichlids guys they're very territorial you know, and by small signs of aggression, I could even mean something as simple as you see how our silent tilapia here just chased our empress slightly and just kind of moved him off spot. That's a small aggression, in my opinion. So, I mean, really far more mild than you would think based off of my own description. But I think everybody in here is doing well. I'm very happy with how this setup has gone so far. Um, and, you know, I think that. There's always room for improvement, but this tank has been doing really, really well so far, guys. Um, these guys have been together. They were in the cube before, and then they got moved over here. The majority of these fish have been together for a little, about a year and a half now, maybe a little bit longer, give or take. Um, and then, you know, a handful of fish here were added about a, a year into the project, so they've been here for six to nine months um some of these fish but all of these fish have you know been grown out and grown out together um and they're doing really really well guys if you have any questions or would like me to cover even more in depth about the setup of this hap and peacock um sanctuary let me know in the comments below and we can certainly get into that too until then guys enjoy college football today I'm not sure who anybody is uh, rooting for, but we are. On that note, Matty Fish out.